monetary policy. Yesterday we talked about reserve requirements. And we talked about the discount rate. And we mentioned briefly, what else? Open market operations. Open market operations. And my pen's about to quit on me. Open market operations. These three policy tools of the Federal Reserve we call the quantitative tools of monetary policy. Quantitative tools. Tell me something about reserve requirements. What was that? Out of every dollar deposited in your bank, you must keep some percentage of it either in your vault, in cash, or on on your in your account with the Federal Reserve. Okay? So Strickland walks in there and gives you $100. You've got to take, let's say, $10 of it. You either put it in your vault or you go deposit it with the Fed in your account. And then you've got $90 left. What do you do with that? Basically, you keep a little of it around so if Strickland comes in and wants some of his money, you've got enough. But you take the stuff you think you'll never really have to give to him and you invest it or loan it out. Okay? Now, if the Fed tells the uh, banks that you can reduce the amount of reserve requirement you have, what does that mean for the bank? Has more money. They have more money available to lend out. So watch my arrows here. That's going to increase the money supply because banks have more money available to lend. When they have more money available to lend, what does that do to interest rates? Interest rates fall. When interest rates fall, more people borrow money, businesses borrow more money, and aggregate demand increases. Everybody okay with that? Pretty simple. Let's do the discount rate. What is the discount rate? Interest rate that banks pay the Fed when they borrow money. Okay? You and I borrow from our banks when we need to. The banks borrow from the Fed when they want to. The interest rate they pay is called the discount rate. If the Fed reduces the discount rate, what will happen to the money supply? Banks will borrow more money. It's cheap. So the money supply will increase, causing interest rates to fall, and therefore people to borrow more and spend more and aggregate demand to increase. Everybody tracking with that okay? When you increase the money supply, and as a result, you increase aggregate demand. Our term for that is expansionary or easy monetary policy. We could also call it stimulatory. It tends to stimulate, stimulate the economy. Stimulatory uh, monetary policy. Now the third tool down here was open market operations. To get into that, I want to talk about bonds for a few minutes and then we'll come back to this list, okay? Bond. I think we did this a little bit yesterday. Traditionally a bond was a written document printed up in certain denominations. We'll use $1,000 for all of our figuring. And a bond is basically uh, an IOU. It's a loan. And so the city of Gainesville, for example, wants to build new roads. They go out and issue bonds. That means they sell these bonds to people who want to invest. The bond says, I'll pay you, I, the city of Gaines, will pay you interest at 5% every year until the year, let's say, 2022. Signed by the mayor, official seal, you got a bond. How does a bond work theoretically? As the city, I sell it to you, you give me $1,000. Every year, let's say in December, I send you a check for 5% of that 1000 I send you 50 bucks. At the end of 2022, it's a 10-year bond, I send you your $50, 
and I give you back your thousand. Thanks for the loan. Simple system, the way it's designed. We also said that the early bonds were printed up with a, a margin around them, divided into little sections called what? Coupons. Coupons. And so you clipped off a coupon e each year, you sent it to the city of Gainesville, they found your name, address, and <coughs> sent you your check. So if you stole this bond from somebody else, could you still collect the interest? Sure. city didn't care. As long as they had the coupon, they sent it to whoever sent it in. These were called bearer bonds. Whoever had, whoever bears the bond could collect the interest. And in your historical novels, you'll hear about the bad guys and criminals stealing bonds. And that's what they were doing. From that, we get two terms. The denomination of the bond is called the par value. The rate of interest that it pays for each coupon is called the coupon rate. That's a quick review of what we did yesterday. Now, let's introduce the concept of yield. The yield on a bond. You can think of this as your return on your investment. It's always expressed as a percentage rate on an annual basis. The annual percentage return. The yield on a bond is determined by how much interest do you receive each year divided by the price that you paid for the bond. So if you bought that bond for $1,000 and you got $50 each year, it had a 5% yield. Okay, so far? How do you determine the interest rate? I mean, the interest payment. Par value, Par value times the coupon rate. Par times coupon. The interest is always par times coupon rate. So this never changes. It's printed on the bond. But the price may change. Let's talk about that. Let's keep our same bond here. Yield equals, I'm going to change this slightly, annual interest over price. Okay? This is a dollar figure over a dollar figure. We know that the annual interest on this bond is $50 because it's printed on there. It never changes. But I bought this bond. I paid $1,000 for it. And now i got to go pay off my bar bill down at the ABC liquor store. <clears throat> and I need some money. And I need to sell it. And you're thinking, well, i got a little extra money I need to invest. And so you look around and you say, how much are those kind of bonds paying today? Because Strickland bought this five, six years ago. And you find out that bonds today have coupon rates of 6%. Would you rather buy one of the new ones paying 6% or would you rather buy mine? The new one, six percent, still more than five percent, even if you went to public school, right? So I say, well, look, I, I'll sell it to you cheap. I'll take less than a thousand dollars for it. Sounding better? Got your interest now. I will make my bond have a yield, an annual return of six percent. Pays fifty dollars a year. Let's see if we can calculate what price I would charge you for it. P is equal to 5 divided by 0 .0, 50 over 0 0.06. Anybody know what 5.6 is? 833. Eight, 83, in this case, $833.33. And so now, if I offered you the bond for $883.33, that would be the same yield to you as buying one of those new bonds. You got me? Everybody okay? And here's the thing you want to remember. What happened to interest rates from the time I bought the bond? 
they went up. What happened to the value of my bond? It went down. Interest rates and bond yields or bond prices go in opposite directions. And you want to be able to do this very simple calculation. Let's do one for grins. Just for practice here, let's make up a new one. Uh, I have a $1,000 par bond that has a coupon rate of 4.5%. Uh, current yields are 8%. If you bought a new bond, you can make 8%. What price would you be willing to pay for this bond? And remember, your formula is, we'll put it over here for a minute, um, yield equals annual interest over price. What's the annual interest going to be on this bond? How many dollars every year are you going to get? $45. 4.5% of 1000 $45 annual interest. I'm sorry, I wrote this wrong up here. That's not price. That's yield. We want your 4.5% bond, we want it to yield 8%, just like every other bond is today. So your yield is going to be 8%. It's going to pay $45. Calculate the price. Say again. I'm going to take your word at it because I also went to public school and I can't do that in my head. $562.50. Okay. What happened to interest rates after you bought the bond? They went up. What happened to the value of your bond that you paid $1,000 for? It went down. You with me okay on that? Has anybody here taken financial accounting or accounting too? Several of you. You may recall that in that course when you were doing bond values, it was a much more complicated calculation because you took into the account the $1,000 that you're going to get at maturity. This, this is useful for what we're talking about. This is true of a bond called a perpetuity. That's a bond that never matures. It just pays interest all its life. And that, they're out there. Not a lot of them, but they're out there. But it, what it really does is illustrate how interest rates and bond prices move in opposite directions. So this is not different than what you learned in accounting too, or account, financial accounting. It's just a simplified version. Now, let's see here. So the AI is not the annual interest. The AI, AI is the annual interest. It's the annual interest. Par it's times coupon. Yeah. Uh, one We'll do another one or two of these every term, every class we meet from now on out. If you'll remind me just to practice it, but you know you're going to see one or two of those on the exam. You plug in the numbers, calculate it. You know, even with public school math, it's not too bad. Here's my question: Do you think you ought to go out and it's a, say you know you got your retirement portfolio, your 401k? What would you think about going out and investing bond in bonds today? Buying a bunch of bonds and putting them in your portfolio? What do you think is going to happen to bond prices over the next couple of three years, five years, ten years? Increase. Which way is interest rates going to go over the next few years? Why up? They can't go down any further. We're at the ZLB. What's a ZLB? Zero lower bound. We're down to just about a zero percent interest rates on uh, Treasury bills. So if interest rates can't go down, and the only way they're likely to go at all is up, what will happen to the value of your bonds? Okay? So you wait till they go up and you buy. You want to buy, in a sense, you want to buy bonds when interest rates are high. So that as those rates fall, what happens to that bond? During, during like inflation. And typically when you have inflation, interest rates go up. Right. right? So I'll give you an example. 1979, inflation was over 12%. And there were bonds being bought and sold out there paying 18%. You've got an 18% bond, and five years later, interest rates have dropped to 4%. How are you doing? You just wish you had more of them. 
Okay? 